Hello, Laura Donovan families. This is Mrs. Wetko, and I'm going to read chapters 50 to 52 of The Wild Robot. So grab your books and get started. Chapter 50, The Button. Bright Bill was thinking about the small button on the back of his mother's head. His mother was thinking about it too. They couldn't stop wondering what would happen if the button were pressed. And one day they decided it was time to find out. Ra sat on the floor of the nest. Her son nervously stood on a stone behind her. I am ready when you are, said the robot. Okay, said the gosling, here we go. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click. Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. Oh no. Mama, can you hear me? There was no answer. Bright Bill waddled around and looked at his mother's face. Her strange spark of life had gone out. The gosling had never felt more alone. He was ready to switch her back on, but what if she didn't wake up? What if she woke up different? The gosling was afraid to press the button, and he was afraid not to press the button. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet, her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Mama, can you hear me? Hello, I am Rosam Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz. The robot spoke these words automatically in a language Bright Bell didn't understand. His little heart raced as his worst fears seemed to be coming true. But a moment later, her familiar voice returned. And the robot said in the language of the animals, Hello, son. How long was I out? It seemed like only an instant to me. You were out for a few minutes, said the gosling, as he hugged his mother, but it seemed like forever to me. Chapter 51, The Autumn. The days were getting shorter, the air was getting crisper, and one morning, Roz walked out to find a layer of frost on the garden. Autumn had come to the island. The tree leaves, which had been green for the robot's entire life, turned yellow and orange and red. Then they let go of their branches and floated down to the ground, and the forest gradually filled with the sounds of creatures scurrying through the dead leaves. Tree nuts were also falling, thunking onto roots and rocks, and occasionally clanging off the robot. The smell of flowers faded as blossoms withered. All the rich scents and colors of the island were draining away. The animals were also changing. Furry animals were growing more fur. Feathery animals were growing more feathers. Scaly animals were starting to look for new homes. Yerp, it's cooling off, croaked one frog to another. Before long, it'll be time for sleeping. Yerp, I'd better start looking for a good hole, croaked the second frog. Have you found one yet? Nah, croaked the first frog. I'll look for a hole next week. For now, I'm going to enjoy the warm sunlight while it lasts. Yerp. Many of the animals... Many of the island animals were already thinking about their winter hibernation. Frogs, bees, snakes, and even bears would soon disappear and spend the next few months rusting out of sight. And then there were the birds. Some birds, like owls and woodpeckers, would spend the winter nesting and eating the island's few re remaining edibles. But the mi migratory birds were preparing for the long journey south to, the warm, to their warm wintering grounds. Among the birds, destined to leave were the geese. Chapter 52, The Flock. Bright Bill slowly waddled into the nest. He had a confused look on his face. Mama, the other gosling, said that, th that we have to leave the island soon and we won't return for months and months. Is this true? That is true, said Roz. You know that geese migrate south for the winter. Will you migrate with us, said Bright Bill? I cannot fly or swim, so I will spend the winter here on the island. Can I stay with you? I do not think that is a good idea. I think you should migrate with the flock. How long will, how long will the migration take? Said Bright, said Bright Bell. Where will we fly? When will we come home? I do not know, said Ross. Let's go ask the others. And so the robot and the gosling walked around the pond to where loud wing and her friends were chatting hello everyone said Roz. bright bill has some questions about the flock's upcoming winter migration and we'd be happy to answer them said loud wing what would you like to know little one how long will the migration take said bright bill where will we fly when will we come home 
It'll take us a couple of weeks to fly south, said Loudwing, said Loudwing, depending on the weather. We'll join other flocks at a beautiful lake in the middle of a great sprawling field, said another goose, said another goose. And we'll come back to the island after four or five months, said someone else, depending on the weather. As they walk back to the nest, Brightbill said to his mother, lately I've been feeling this strong urge to fly, not just around the pond or the island, but to go on a long flight, a journey. Those are your instincts, said the robot. All animals have instincts. They help you survive. Do you have instincts, said the gosling. I do have instincts. They help me survive also. My instincts are definitely telling me to fly south for the winter, said Brightbell. I just wish you could join us. I'm going to worry about you while I'm away. Do not worry. I will be fine, said Roz. How bad could winter be?